Uh, good morning. I'm here at my kitchen table. I've just got through reading Matthew chapter 9, and I'm going to focus on the section in Matthew 9 where Jesus is um, calling Matthew, and then the Pharisees respond to Jesus' interaction with Matthew and his buddies. And, um, and then Jesus makes a profound statement at the end um, to the Pharisees, and I think that it is something that we can learn from. Um, uh, certainly, it's something that uh, stood out to me as I read today. So let me go ahead and share my screen, and we will get started with this uh, right away. All right, so we're almost there. Matthew chapter 9, <clears throat> Jesus has been um, doing ministry with his buddies, uh, with his disciples, and he uh, has been doing all kinds of uh, miracles, having compassion on people, healing the sick. Um, Jesus is certainly making a name for himself, right? Um, and then he comes across the tax booth of Matthew and uh, calls him. And so in Matthew 9, starting in verse 9, it says, As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Now, there's some amazing things uh, going on here. First of all, in terms of, um, in terms of Matthew, one of the interesting things here is that Matthew is a tax collector, right? Um, that makes him um, significant in a, in a couple different ways. One is that he's probably wealthy. You know, um, most tax collectors were pretty well off in that day, but there was a stigma that um, their own Jewish culture had against them and categorized them in this category of sinners or um, lumped them in with uh, prostitutes, um, mainly because they were seen as cheats or um, greedy, but even more so, they were seen as traitors. Um, they were part of the um, giving in to the oppressive Roman government in the eyes of uh, a Jewish person. We. And we see this attitude that um, the Jewish culture has against tax collectors. Um, but what's amazing is that Jesus doesn't give any thought to that. Matter of fact, not only does Jesus call Matthew, and, and stunningly, <laughs> Matthew just leaves his tax booth and, and follows Jesus. And apparently, they went to Matthew's home. And uh, it says the next verse, while Jesus was having dinner, at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came. So here we go. Many tax collectors and sinners, of course, sinners. <laughs> These, and, and the reason that Matthew probably had this friend group, right, is because they were considered um, to be uh, cheats, and they were considered to be vile by the Jewish culture. And, and so what does Matthew do? He invites his, his vile sinful friends to come eat with Jesus and his disciples. And this does not make the Pharisees um, very comfortable. Matter of fact, it says when the Pharisees saw this, they asked the disciples, why, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? The very question itself tells us that the, uh, the religious leaders, okay, the religious leaders thought of themselves as better than these tax collectors and sinners. They're better. And uh, I think this is something we need to pay attention to because I think it's, I think oftentimes, especially us in the church, um, you know, we, we, we start, we're serving God, we're, we're faithfully attending church, we're worshiping, um, we're doing the right things, right? And it's easy for us to see ourselves as better 
than other people. But the reality is uh, we're not. And this, and this particular account kind of bears this out a little bit uh, because Jesus, um, in his response to these Pharisees, points out a very glaring thing. And that's, and that's this, that on hearing this, Jesus says, it's not the healthy, not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Okay. Now, now Jesus is not saying, he's not saying to the Pharisees, listen, I mean, you guys don't need me. You're good. You're healthy. You're okay with God. But these people aren't. And so, you know, they need a, they need a doctor. I'm going to be here for them. That's not what he is saying. Because then he follows up with this, uh, with this statement. says, go and learn what it, this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And, and the reality is that here are a people, there's these religious leaders, they saw themselves as righteous. So their own view of themselves is, I'm okay with God uh, because of my sacrifices. And um, uh, let me finish that out. Sacrifices. But he says that he's not come to call the righteous. Has he come to call those that see themselves as already without need because of how good they are. Um, but he says, I have come to call sinners. Um, and it reminds me of, uh, a, of a story that Jesus told in Luke 18 that I think really captures this very well. And in Luke 18, verses 10 through 13, Jesus says, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, Okay. and the other a tax collector. So now we see the kind of comparison of these two um, classes of people, if you, if you will. Here are the Pharisees, are the religious leaders, the ones that um, are highly esteemed in the Jewish culture, um, seemingly have it all together. And then you have a tax collector who is a traitor, sinner, uh, and, and considered vile in the Jewish culture. And the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. Mm -mm. I'm better than that. I'm not like other people. I'm not like robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I am better than they. And what makes me better is that I fast. I fast twice a week. And I give a tenth of all I get. Look at my sacrifices. I sacrifice these things and look at me. Um, it, but then Jesus contrasts this with a tax collector. He said, but the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven. So there's a, a shame to this a humility about this tax collector. And um, he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And, and so I want to go back. Here, Jesus says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinner. And, and so what is it that Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying that he desires a, a, a posture of mercy. Somebody that would be like the tax collector in Luke 18, who says, God, I'm coming before you, and, and I have nothing to give. I am a sinner. I'm ashamed of my sin. Um, I need you. There's nothing I can give you to make this right versus sacrifice, which says um, that my worth is contingent on what I give. Um, in other words, in other words, God desires us to have this posture of mercy rather than saying, God, look, this look what all I'm doing for you, you know? Look at all this stuff that I'm doing in your name. 
you know, and, and, and there's a sense of I'm better than other people because of these things that I do. Mm -mm. Nope. We take the posture of mercy. And, and the cool part of this is that when you see yourself as a sinner in need of mercy, then <laughs> something significant happens. And that is you can relate to other centers. And I think this is significant because as believers, it's easy for us to kind of um, forget that where we came from. And we kind of can easily see ourselves as better than other people. Well, I don't do the things that they do. And we kind of shy away from them. And, and we forget about building relationships with sinners. And Jesus did this. He built relationships with those who were sinners. This tax collector um, had dinner at his home. Now, he wasn't influenced by them. He was the influencer. He knew who he was and, and that sort of thing. Um, he wasn't developing this relationship in order to, in order to um, be drawn away into their sin. He loved on them and related to them in order to draw them to himself. And, uh, and so when we take this posture of the fact that we are sinners in need of mercy, then we certainly can relate to other sinners and have genuine conversations about um, spiritual things. We are no better than anybody else. We are all beggars begging for the same bread. And, uh, and so I would encourage you to um, think about who you are in Christ. You are, you're a sinner saved by grace and he has made you his child. And that's nothing, has nothing to do with your sacrifices. It has everything to do with the sacrifice of his own son and the mercy that he has given Father, thank you so much just for a challenge to operate with a posture of mercy um, as opposed to um, this sense of entitlement based on our own sacrifices that we um, have made. Uh, Father, help us to be humble and help us to relate to other people and love on other people in spite of their um, in spite of their sin. Thank you for loving on us in spite of our sin. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, blessings, and uh, hope you have a fantastic day.